First up, about the cap, I asked how I looked with an odd, half joking type thing. Actually, it just popped into my head when I was saying that because everything that you see here basically is not scripted. I don't write, you know, what I'm going to say beforehand. I just do it as I go through. Sometimes I have to repeat it two or three times, but you know, that's all part of it. Anyway, I asked what uh, people thought of it, you know, if, whether it looked good on me or not. And I got lots of comments. A uh, few, most of them were complimentary, but a couple were not so complimentary. I don't know if they were joking. Uh, one in particular called me or said that I looked like a real dick with it on. So I said in that video that I was going to take apart uh, the um, hammer and anvil section of the impact driver. I've already taken apart the impact driver. Uh, if you watch my other channel, you saw that I made this abomination right here. This is a my old, well, I showed that in the video anyway, the last video. My DeWalt pistol grip drill with a Makita battery on the end now. So that runs it. So I get to use this drill again. Anyway, uh, I've got the uh, nose section from the impact driver here. This is this solid chunk of metal here. And I'm going to put it in my vise and I'm going to unscrew the end. I do believe that unscrews. I took this apart, one of these apart before. Uh, I had one break, the spring inside break actually. So I took it apart just to have a look. So I'm going to do that now. Clamp it in there pretty tightly. I'm going to break it, but i to stop it from, from turning. I got my old channel locks here because I don't seem to have my adjustable wrench in here. Now, like I say, I think this unscrews, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it seems to be going, but I don't know which direction. It's, uh, there it goes. It's reverse threaded, which I guess kind of makes sense. This part is one piece solid. This, like I said on the other one before, my spring broke here, and that's what spring loads this. Uh, I don't know if this is called the hammer or the anvil part. I think that the part that's inside is actually the anvil, but you can see this pu part pushes back like that. And what happens is, as this spins around, this uh, these edges of the hammer, I'm going to call it the hammer, these edges of the hammer strike the anvil and then they slip up because you can see it's slightly angled here. So then it, it slips past the anvil and then it swings around, momentum is on its side then, and it comes around and it goes in again and it's, it makes contact with the anvil again. So that's that really hard striking that you get with the rotary motion. Okay, so that's the hammer part and the spring that loads it forwards. And try to squeeze that. That takes a lot of force. Now I mentioned torque when I talked about the impact driver in the van. And that controls how much actual driving torque that your impact driver has, how stiff this spring is here, because the stiffer the spring, the more the impact driver will actually turn whatever you're trying to turn before it slips back, slips past the anvil to make another strike. So if you're if you're using an impact driver and it's really, you know, not driving the screw in before, you know, very well before it starts to make that hammering sound, then that means you have a weak spring in there. And that's one thing I found with so many different or so, having so many um, different, or I can't say different because they're all the same brand, but having so many of the same impact drivers was the varying amounts of tension that the spring had. I think the very first one of these that I bought, and the very you know the very thing that sold me on the Makita buying those tools was how strong it was doing that. It had a lot of torque to drive the screw before it started doing the ham reaction. I'm going to take the uh, this part out. Now see these these parts are pressed together. I'm going to get the camera in to get a better view on the inside here. 
but that's actually attached to the nose part right here that holds the bit. And it's very tricky to get those two separated without doing damage. But I'm going to drive it out because this is all on a bearing. So I'm just going to put it, actually I'm going to put it on the anvil of the vise and take the hammer and give it a couple whacks. Pretty annoying, but I already had this driven out. You can see the deep groove I got in my uh, wooden vise here. And I just put it back in just to show because the camera wasn't recording for some stupid reason. Cameraman didn't turn it on. Anyway, this just drives out as I already recorded, but there you go. Now this was just a press fit right into that, this bearing that sits on the end here. So that is the anvil right there. Messy work, I'll tell you that much. Uh, so, yeah, here's the way it works. It's better, easier to illustrate it here. Okay, so as this is spinning like this, it'll meet the anvil here. And if what you're driving is not that, you know, doesn't require that much torque, it will just drive it straight in without pounding, right? But if it starts to uh, slow down to the point where it overcomes that spring tension on the back here, what will happen is this will slip past that. So you can see that. And then it'll fall back in again, but then it spins around and strikes it here. So that's striking it right there. That's the impact sound that you hear. So that's all there is to it. I hope it was fairly easy to understand. I can't really explain it any um, differently than that. It slips and then strikes and slips and strikes and so on and so forth. So the parts that wear out on these, uh, the big part that I found that wears out is the bearing on the front here. They always loosen up. And I think it's just a steady striking uh, action that does that mainly. And then the other parts that wear out, of course, are the striking surfaces. Uh, I guess over time the spring will loosen up. It's very rare for it to break. I don't know why mine broke that time. Might have been a problem with the spring individually. And that's what I said about, you know, when I talked about tool reviews, those things happen and they happen randomly and you really can't account for it. You know, overall it doesn't happen because I think we've had like 20 impact drivers and that was the only one where the spring actually broke. Anyway, before I go, let's have a quick look at the very tiny motor that's inside these things to power them. This one, of course, has brushes, although many of the newer ones are brushless these days. I think that brushes and motors of this sort are gonna be a thing of the past. Anyway, I've got a brushless one here, but it still works really well. This is a newer model, the same type. I don't. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, there was one problem with this is that it would have an intermittent trigger. I thought something was coming up on me. An intermittent trigger that would, like you could push part of the way in and it wouldn't do anything. So little problem with this and kept me from using it because you would pretty much have to put all the gas on before it would do anything and then it would destroy whatever you're trying to drive. Okay, maybe one more thing before I go. I'm just going to open this box. This is a table saw. And get the stuff out. A um, few comments also in that unboxing video about leaving the stuff in the van. About the batteries being susceptible to cold weather. And that's absolutely not the case. The batteries, uh, these batteries don't get damaged by storing them in the cold. Actually, it prolongs the life of them. Way back, I bought a box of six Makita batteries because we were going through batteries pretty quickly too. So I saw the Makita batteries, a box of six. I think it was six for $699, which is a pretty good deal at the time. But of course you can't really use six batteries at a time. So what I did was I took the first two and used those and I put the other four into my freezer. 
and I kept those there for about three years. Every time I opened the freezer, there would be the batteries inside the freezer. And then when I took them out, I let them warm up, of course, before you use them. And uh, I used them, and they lasted just as long as the first two. So, absolutely no. But if you leave these things laying around for three years, they will go dead, basically, without even being used. So, you know, keep them, put them in the freezer. That's not probably not a recommendation that you're going to get from the manufacturer, but that's what I did and it did work. So use at your own um, discretion, I guess. Maybe I'll do a little video. Oh, this will make Matthias happy. Look at this. It's got one of those crazy push sticks in here that he likes so much. I'll have to save that in a special place. Does the DeWalt battery fit inside the Canadian Tire Drill? And that's an interesting question actually. So I thought I would go out and bring in the drill. And I can see immediately that the connectors uh, part of it is different. So this battery will not fit in this drill. It won't even start to go in. They've got different keying in here. 